So here are some problems with high stakes testing. And I'll be the first to tell you, I do not like high stakes testing. Um, I'm not a good test taker, um, although there are times and places you must take tests. I had to take my SATs. I had to take my graduate exams. I had to take my certification tests, and all those tests were high stakes tests, and I survived. But I think my problem, my biggest problem with high stakes testing is um, how young of learners that are now taking high stakes tests, uh, we're, they're having kindergartners on computers taking high stakes tests for several days into weeks. And this is definitely not, de it's definitely not developmentally appropriate. And also, to be good test takers, you have to teach not only to the test, but also how to take a test to our youngest learners because they've never taken tests like this before. And so, so much of our time that could be spent on learning tasks and, um, you know, fun developmentally appropriate activities are spent on paper and pencil practice test taking and especially on the computer. Um, but some other problems with high stakes tests are these. First of all, we're asking students to do different tasks than they normally do to show knowledge um, of their skills. So instead of having students do authentic tasks like reading and writing and drawing and retelling, we're asking them to fill in multiple choice bubbles. And this takes many hours of student practice. If you talk to any parent who has a child preparing for the the third grade PSSA, you will be shocked at how much time is spent on test taking, and it is ridiculous. Um, also, the test results are based on this one single assessment, whether it be you know a couple days or, or a couple hours even. A lot of teachers in a lot of school districts um, are separating students and leveling them based on the test scores on some of these standardized tests. And we have kiddos out there that have test anxiety might not feel good the day of the test, are tired, um, test exhaustion, because these are not developmentally appropriate or what we should be asking our learners to do. And so these results are usually not representative of their learning. And to erase, um, you know, whole years of learning, a whole year of learning and what the teacher has documented throughout that year and replace it with one single test is, is slightly ridiculous. Um, my daughter's ELA teacher, she's a 7th grader, she told her on the first day of school, I don't like that I don't know you. And um, my daughter said, well, you don't know any of us. It's the first day of school. And she said, well, I have everyone else's PSSA score, and that's your number for the year, and that tells me everything about you, and it's all I need to know about you for how you're going to learn this year. And um, my daughter was opted out of the PSSA. I don't have my children take the PSSA test. And, um, you know, it told me a lot about her as a teacher. If she's going to base her whole school year on one number that she gets before she even meets the students, that, that really says a lot about her as a teacher um, and not in a good way. So we need to remember that high stakes tests are what they are, uh, and they're not the answer to everything. One of the big problems are the scores are reported to parents and teachers and schools months, usually five and six months after the test has been taken. So students don't, don't ever see the questions that were incorrect. Teachers cannot drive their instruction in any way. The information is just wasted. It's just reported, and you know that doesn't value anyone. Also, if you are an English language learner or a special education student, you are taking the same test without accommodations um, or with minimal accommodations that everyone else is taking. So if you don't speak English, you are still going to take the test in English. If you're a special education student and you get modifications um, on your curriculum, it doesn't matter. You take the test for your grade level. So these test scores should just... Well, we shouldn't even be asking these students to take these tests because the information we're getting from the test is not important. Um, one of my students from Penn State, her mother is a special education teacher in Harrisburg, and uh, right now, and this is our, our next um, component on this slide, is teachers' jobs in Pennsylvania are being evaluated based on the test scores of the students in their class. Well, as a special education teacher, she knows that none or few of her students will get proficient or advanced on the PSSA because they're in special education for a reason. Um, we have, you know, years and years and 
I've documented information on these children that say they can't learn in a regular education classroom, but we're going to give them a regu regular education test and require them to be proficient and advanced. And she came to me and she said, my mom's really concerned. Do you know anything about the law of this? She said, because her teacher evaluation requires that she have proficient or advanced students um, or she can be fired and she knows none of her children are going to be proficient or advanced. Um, what are they going to do? Fire all the special education and English language learning teachers in the whole state of Pennsylvania? Probably not. But it's a concern, and it's a waste of our children's time, and it's a blow to their self-esteem to give them a test that is going to set them up for failure. Um, so this is just a quick little commercial about the problems. There's bigger problems. There's more problems. Um, I could, unfortunately, talk for a long time about this because I'm very passionate about this being removed from our, our classrooms. But, um, you know, this gives you kind of a background for you as a teacher. You may be asked to administer these, and it is your job. You cannot refuse. Um, but know that our students are faced with this challenge, um, you know, at least once a year, if not more.